Thank you, everybody. It's a, it's a very good opportunity to coming back to Champaign. Uh, this morning, I woke up around 3 a.m. Well, I was waiting when my flying, uh, flight to come back to Chicago and I can drop by to Champaign. So I came to Minnesota and then uh, I got a good opportunity to come back. I calculated it's four years, one month. The last time I left uh, Champaign, it was 28 April 2010. So it's a 28th May in 2014, almost one month and four years, yes. So many things have changed. Uh, many people came and then things have changed within four years. So I visited uh, my farm. Uh, my research supervisor, Professor Leitian, is here. I was talking and then uh, suddenly the case came, oh, you have a presentation, you must have to come. So I almost forgot that uh, I have a presentation today. So it's really good to be with you again. Uh, today, basically, I would like to talk about post-harvest losses. Uh, my basic things is precision ag. So before coming here, we were talking, there are the lots of scopes. Uh, we are working only the precision ag in de developed countries like United States or Europe or Japan. But there is a huge potentials in the de under the developing countries like Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Today I will focus mainly the losses and identification in the supply chain. So what are the main uh, criteria uh, to identify? Uh, you can be with me around 30 to 40 minutes. I will cover up. Uh, there are some basically I collected the data, secondary data. Uh, some of the extensive reports already done under the World Bank and National Food Security Programs. So I summarized those and a few GIS issues I added. Uh, let me go a little bit further. Uh, first, uh, tell me my career path. I started as a lecturer in Bangladesh Agriculture University in 2000. Then um, I got the Japanese government scholarship. I moved to Japan. Then I got my PhD there. And um, I, again, after completing my PhD, I went to Bangladesh, taught over the two years. From Bangladesh, I um, came to uh, University of Illinois, stayed two years in IGB and EBI project, and worked with Professor Leitian and Professor Casey Ting. In 2010, I moved back again to Japan. Still, I'm working there last five years uh, in, in coordinator for master's program and also doctoral program for international agricultural research. So I have the interactions for the many countries. Recently, I'm recruiting students from Afghanistan. So. Uh, when I was learning about the post-harvest loss, then one of the students I would like to accept from Afghanistan, he was working, would like to work on post-harvest things for the fruits, how the things over there. Uh, this is uh, Bangladesh. I did some GIS map. Basically, if you know, the upper part is India, Nepal, and we are surrounded by mostly India. The climatic variations is very close uh, at the Indian climates. This is the agroecological zones. So mostly we have um, 13 agroecological zones based on the different agricultural practices. So the temperatures, almost like a maximum temperatures in June is uh, 19 to 34 degrees Celsius this is the June. And then mm, the precipitation is average there, uh, 217 in this part. And then most uh, uh, the low rainfall region is coming of the northern part. Because the why I'm telling about this thing, the climate is very important factor to predict uh, the post-harvest things. Uh, today I will focus something, uh, which are the main things, why the farmers are losing their value for the crops. So one of the reasons is not to identify the optimum time window, what at the time they should cultivate, what the time they should harvest the, the cereals. And uh, uh, this part is, we can see, the mostly is, is India. Here is a Myanmar, and uh, the covering with India, and this is the Seven Sisters areas. So I was born mostly here. I was grown up in the Dhaka, then I moved to Maimon Singh, and then I studied over there in Bangladesh Agriculture University. Uh, let me go the post harvest loss. What are the things that uh, basically the total production comes from the pre harvest? 
So it's a uh, threshing loss. We call after the harvesting, when you bring the grain, the first thing is happens the threshing. So we do not have much more like a combined harvesters. We do not have much more like a uh, sophisticated, there are some power threshers nowadays. Most of the threshings is then drum threshing. If you see a drum, there are some nails over there. So farmers, they do the threshing. So this is one of the main sources of losses as well. Then it should be drying loss, the mistake, the drying loss, then processing loss. Processing comes from the milling and parboiling. So maybe you are not familiar with what is milling, what is parboiling, that will show up later. The grading and trimming, and then transportation, storage, distribution, consumption, and then consumption. So these are the post common post-harvest loss. So uh, just I would like to show you why is the uh, post-harvest loss, what are the main causes of the post-harvest losses in the worldwide. I got the data from FAO. The Southeast Asia is there. You can see the post-harvest is almost uh, how it comes up there, uh, the per capita food waste. Uh, today's uh, my presentation is basically on two re three extensive reports that was done in 2010 a couple of years from the national food security programs one is for major cereals for rice wheat and maize uh, that done from my university my department professor bala is also my teacher and uh, the another one this is uh, dr kamrul he's also my colleagues so these are the two basic reports uh, i would show today and then summarize the air from uh, these uh, national food security programs. So you can see, uh, we call it around 30 million tons. The major grains is the rice. The staple foods is rice. So mm, we eat rice, maybe in the village area in the morning, also in the lunch and also dinner. But in the town, it is a little bit less. So 30 million tons approximately we produce every year. Uh, we call it post-harvest loss of 10 to 15% per year, approximately. Post-harvest loss of the fruits and vegetables, around 30 to 40% per year. If we calculate the value, how it comes, $3,750 million. It's a huge amount of money for the developing country. So uh, if we can reduce only 3%, only 3%, so we can save 1 million tons of the food crops. So it has a huge impact on the economy and then how the food losses. So this is a common practice in our countries. Uh, the, the women's, they are contributing for in especially winnowing. We call this winnowing means separating the rice from the stocks. So there are winnower, but that's a not common, the machines. But most of the things uh, they are using after winnowing, using a common uh, practice. These are the post-harvest losses. So causes, uh, mainly the breakage, scattering, and the lack of technology, and insect infestation. And also there is another loss, it happens during the harvesting if sudden rainfall comes because of the, if the climatic variations occurs in suddenly, if the rice is on the time of harvesting, if delays, and at the time rain comes, if we cannot predict, then it has a huge loss. So uh, that cannot be, uh, I cannot say more appropriately, because that's why is the weather information and others very important to understand the harvesting window. Uh, lack of drying capacity, so whenever you see that the, we easily still are doing the sun drying. So uh, there are few places, there are some solar tunnel dryers, bean dryers, but most of the cases all over the country, they have a sun drying systems. So the sun drying is not much uh, efficient than the other drying. So marketing has uh, also the same vulnerability, high price variability and season and production for limited storage. The storage is another uh, hurdles and challenge, I would say, because the, when the farmers have a bump, uh, huge amount of production, they have no storage facilities. They lost huge amount of value. The last year, what happened in our country, we had a huge amount of potato production in the northern side of the country. Then farmers couldn't sell the 
potato. They have no chilling facilities, no cold storage. Then my university, Bangladesh Agriculture University, all of the teachers, they went that side. Everybody bought 50 kgs of potatoes to save the farmers because the government has no policy how to save the farmers. So uh, because we are agriculturists, we are ag engineers, we know how it value to produce the crops. So uh, it was like in person, but in the millions of farmers, they are doing the same things and losing the value of the crops. Uh, before going to the uh, main presentation, I would like to do the, what are the cropping calendars? What are the crops we grow? What are the timings? Like we have uh, three main rice, we call Aush, Amon, and Boro. So you can see the Aush comes from the, uh, the March, beginning of March to, the, uh, to almost like a August and the September. This is the time we are using, this is sowing and this is the harvesting and this is the middle is called intercultural operations for the Aush. Then Amun, we usually do in mostly in June, at the end of the May to June, and then almost in the December in the middle. And then Boro, we do in January to, to May. Actually, the main production comes from the boro. This is a called like a winter, winter one. Uh, this is the boro production, sowing and harvesting. So these are the three main varieties of rice we produce uh, almost. And then cropping intensity is very high because our land is very limited. So we need to cultivate the land several times. Maybe we have almost three to four times the crops. Like in the United States, you have only corn or soybean each year but we ne cannot think about one crop one year. We need to uh, produce crop at least three times. The last year I visited in northern part of Bangladesh, we saw that there is a mango growing very good. So farmers need to, because need to do the other things. The, what they're doing inside the mango field, they're doing cultivation of rice because they cannot f keep the land fallow. So they need to grow a lot of rice because the mango is only one season. So mango cannot give the, all the food security issues. So they are producing, uh, it's very fascinating. Inside the ma mango field, there's a rice field. So even rice field, they have a mango tree in between. So maybe there is some ecological issues, but I'm not going there. But the main thing is that the farmers need to cultivate a lot. We have, uh, the population is high, the land is limited. We need to produce the number of crops. Uh, then you can see in the wheat, we also produce in the winter time, mostly in January to the April, and then sorghum. Uh, we use sorghum also, and then potato in the January to May in this time. So these are the major uh, rice, wheat, and sorghum, and potato, because potato is we try to produce huge because of, like, uh, sometimes we, in some parts of northern part, the main vegetables is the potato. Uh, I did some GIS based uh, analysis to show you uh, the variability of production, the area of coverage, the total Aush, three varieties of the rice, how they are distributed all over the country. They, we have uh, six divisions. Uh, Rashi, this is the northern part, Dhaka is the central, Silet is the other side, and then Chittagong, and then Borishal, and Khulna. These are the divisions. The country is divided to the 64 districts and six divisions. In that six divisions, how the rice uh, cultivations are growing on? What are the area coverage? And uh, these are common causes uh, I identified, like physical losses, and then opportunity losses and external losses. So in physical losses, we call uh, spoilage from the product by weight or quality, and opportunity loss when the farmers get lost in the marketing and selling their stuff. And external losses, of course, it comes with the value chain, how the participants and the rest of the society the affects. And uh, these are the common, you can see the vegetables, how it's uh, going to, from production to the transportation and for selling stage, it has a huge loss, as well as like the grains. So the vegetables, uh, it's really too high, as you see, the 30% loss. 30% loss of the vegetables. The one of the reasons is the storage. We do not have storage facilities. So if it is a, at least a short-term storage facility, 
then we can save a lot of uh, money and can uh, produce lots of income generation. Uh, you can see the post-harvest loss comes from the direct loss of the food, economic and financial impacts. I told you that threshing, uh, threshing is uh, in common in our country, is a drum thresher, you can see. Still, we know our uh, power threshers are not available nowadays all over the country. Still, people are using the drum or drum thresher, which is very manual labor. You can see that they need to beat it by hands, then separate the grains from the stock. So it's, it's not so easy job. If somebody asked me to do that, maybe I could survive 10 minutes to do it, because it's very, very hard uh, to beat the rice and put it, and here what's happened, maybe if you were like a uh, foot, that when the rice is beating on a drum, it has a kernel, and kernel is easily damaged because of the overbeating. If the rice is overmatured, then there is a huge loss. And when it goes to the milling, and then there is also loss. So the optimum time window is very important. After that, if it is like a beating in this same, same way, we lose the rice quality, it's a kernel quality. There is a breaking of the quality. Uh, these are common post-harvest losses. This is the, uh, we call it a similar way as storage. Usually the wholesalers, they are doing this way. There is also lots of losses comes from the wholesaling stages. Uh, let me focus on what are the cereals, rice, wheat, and maize. So uh, rice is a common rice field. We have still the traditional way, the manual way of harvesting rice. Nowadays, this year, I visited uh, some of the places. There was some of the small combines are coming from China, but it is not all the way because the cost, cost involvement is very high. Because most of the farmers, their average farm size is around two to five acres, average two to farm. There are somebody are marginal farmers, somebody doesn't have land. They take the land for one year or so two years as a leasing. So they do not have much money to afford the machineries. So what they do, they usually, uh, it's a really manual, it's very hard to say the ergonomic and other way. It's very difficult to uh, harvest the paddy from the field using a simple uh, knife or uh, some sort of stuff. They cut it by hand. You can, this is the mostly still 80% of the country, they're practicing the same way. So there is huge loss also coming of the harvestings. This is the carrying, you can see, in this stage, how we lost? Because stocks are attached with the, the grains that is attached to the stocks. If it is overripe, then it's very easy to fall down on the roads. So we, while carrying, is a common practice to carry. If it is a combine, in Japan, we have a combined harvesters. So this combine usually separate the rice and the stocks easily. So the rice are one way, stocks are other way, so there is a no loss. But in our cases, we have uh, common losses while we just harvest in manually. So almost like you can see 7% losses, we, like a borrow and almond pedi, and it's a 2.3 billion currency every year in the local currency. In threshing, this is a now common, uh, but they are giving a shared machinery. Shared machinery means uh, there are some contractor, they can borrow the machine for a while, and then people, few laborers, then can do that. Uh, this is using a small scale um, uh, power tiller engine, uh, approximately five to eight horsepower, and then they coupled with a, a drum with some nails. Uh, but the farmers, most of the farmers do not own these sort of machines. So when someone brings, they hire the laborer, try to do it one or two days. So this is what we call the drum thresher. Uh, to separate the grains from the stalks, because uh, I'm not sure whether how many of you are familiar with the rice, because rice fields, so we need to separate the rice paddy from the stalks. So this is the one way, and the other part, the stalks they use for burning, or it for the cows feeding. So most of them sometimes they prepare it house to give it roof on the house. So that has also a value in. in their own way. Uh, this is also common, I told you, use the drum. So it's really very hard, and if they beat this way to the rise on the drum, 
the most, many of the kernels are broken. So when the kernels break down, the rice, the grain break down, then it has uh, lost the quality and also the, uh, the, uh, the nutritional value. And here is also losses involving. Then we do is called uh, uh, sun drying. Sun drying means uh, to dry the, because when we collect the rice, it has almost 14% of the moisture. When it has a moisture, we, it, we cannot use it for milling. So we need to remove the moisture. So remove the moisture, then usually they put it on the floor. It's common because there are a lack of the dryers. Without dryers, dryers means it keeps the uh, hot air, which will move the moisture. There are some tunnel dryers in Japan. So usually it can easily, you can uh, move the moisture and other. So it's a winnowing, no machine, it's still using the, the lady, using some sort of small traditional equipments. There are how to collect all together. So this is one of the way they are losing. So uh, this is a common practice, how the loss occurs. I collected the data, the secondary data. So Aush, Amun, and Boro storage around 4.46%. And then drying, you can see, 2.87 per boiling. Per boiling is a, to boil the rice. To boil the rice. This is a common practice. We, we eat the rice after boiling. Boiling the, boiling the paddy. And after the boiling, then they move, uh, they do the milling to move out uh, the hard covers of the rice. Uh, many of the country doesn't have these sort of practices, but it is in Bangladesh, it's common, use the parboiling. So then threshing and then transporting, we have a loss of so 1.64, harvesting 3%, then total is 13.97%. Amun is 4.82. It's like a 12.21. So in a drying, parboiling, threshing, transporting, harvesting the loss. So you can see that the, the percentage is too high, 13.97, So 13.58. Uh, this is a curve, how it, the almond, what are the harvesting, transportation, threshing, drying, and storage, how the loss occurs all the way. So uh, there was a study, it's collected from the very much field level. So field level means from the four or five divisions, they collected the data. It is the Maimishing region, where the Bangladesh Gaj University is there. Even you can see uh, the result is very, very high. So this is in almost like upper central part of the Bangladesh. This is one of the data, how fresh the losses comes. Uh, this is from the Kulna. Kulna is almost like near the south side, corner of the south side of the country. The losses is there, storage 5.7, 5.73, 5.0. So in the storage loss is a little bit less. But in Kulna, they have a huge loss. So in total, like a 10.86, 11 point. These are the common losses in, in this region. So uh, you can see that uh, the how loss comes from each of the, uh, the operations. Uh, this is the other part, Dinajpur on the very top, very close to India, and then the losses. And let me tell you, this is one of the most important region in Bangladesh where we produce maximum rice. Because most of the land size is very, very big here. So the rice cultivation is very high here. The coverage is also high. So you can see the 8.84 storage, because storage is low, they have a good facilities compared to the other part because their main rice production belt is from here. So almost like 8.84, 9 and 10% of uh, the losses in the different stage of productions. And then uh, this is the Kumila region close to the Dhaka. Still they have a, the reason here, uh, this is little bit developed part in Bangladesh because education rate is very high here. And then, here yeah, the losses is low compared to the other parts. Especially, it is very close to Dhaka, and then uh, in many of the places, my father actually came from here. Uh, this, this part was from the very beginning, from the British colonialism part. They have a very uh, the high education rate, and then the structures and the agricultural facilities are better. So you can see storage, drying, per boiling, 
they have a better uh, less amount, 6.19, 6.46, 6.40. 6 this is from, I made the graph to give you the visualization where is the data. Because if I only the, make the table, maybe the where is the missing, where is Kulna, it would be tough to understand. So uh, this part. We had a study on the, almost in the top of the northern Dinajpur, we had studied from the Kulna and then Kumilla and as also the Maimin Singh, so to cover, to understand the losses. So uh, I made some GIS graph to give you the overall scenario, how the losses occurs all the way from the four different provinces and four different districts in the provinces. So these are like Amun losses and then Boro losses. Uh, post processor levels, what happens to the processing levels? You can see, uh, in milling, the previous losses are found in milling, drying, per boiling, and the total you can see. Then almond, boro, and aush, and it's the my missing part. It's like a loss in like a processor level in Kulna region. Uh, it depends on sometimes the area and then what type of the facility they have, how farmers are aware of these things, lots of uh, technical issues. Uh, this is also in the other part, so how the like a processor levels. In the processing level, the things are not so high, but the losses comes much more in farm level. So we can see in the region, it can see milling in uh, one part. In the post level in Bangladesh, overall, overall scenario, you can see milling, drying, and parboiling average 1.3, 1.3, 1.12. 1 but the main loss come things occurring in the farm level. So in the maize production, uh, we have uh, producing maize nowadays, huge amount of, because of fodder production, fodder. Uh, fodder means uh, for cattle and others, we need to produce lots of maize. So this is one of the common things, how they dry the maize. Uh, maybe it's not common in the United States to put the maize in that manner, right? So we say the floor, they put all the maize all the way and then try to burn, uh, move out the moisture from the beans. You can see there is a, uh, how loss occurs, how loss occurs in the maize production. So one of the thing uh, from the study, they tried to identify the technical efficiency, which was the main reason to, for the technical efficiency. So you can see that Aou, Shamon, and Boro, and Boro hybrid, uh, almost uh, the reason technical efficiency is needed. So extension activities, storage facilities, all together comes what the technical efficiency uh, it comes. Then for wheat is made, then this is, uh, that was rice, we said with 42% 40, is the most highest, and then technical efficiency 36%. Uh, too many data maybe uh, made, me, made you a little bit boring. So Mahamishin region and Kulna region had comes rise at wholesale level. So uh, we had a farm level, we had a processor level, now we are talking about the wholesale level. In wholesale level, you can see Mahamishin, Kulna, uh, the loss, how it comes from the different uh, rice storage and transportation, storage and transportation comes. Then Dinajpur, uh, the same. In wholesale level, main loss comes from storage and transportation while carrying the, the grains they are. It's not much in a sense, but when it accumulates all together, it is growing very high, high amounts. Uh, then wholesale level overall scenario, uh, you can see uh, almost like almond season, they have uh, this, this is the projections for the losses. This is the projections for the losses. In the retail level, it's not much even, 0.03%, uh, 0.07%, so in the retail level. So storage, it comes with storage, display and transportation, because uh, in retail level, they kept the rice in the open. So sometimes it has comes to insect, infestation comes, uh, that also causes the loss. Uh, in the Najpur and then Kumilla region, so the regional wise. So whole over Bangladesh, it comes in a retail level. The maximum it could be 0.27% uh, is in a retail level. So uh, this is from the producer to retail level, how it comes, the losses according to the different regions for Amon and the Boro rice. 
So uh, this is the another uh, one, how it, the losses comes. So overall, like overall Bangladesh, wholesale, retailer, processor, and producer level, you can see the maximum product loss comes in producer level, at the farm level. Okay, then very little amount comes to other things, wholesaler, retailer, and processor. So we need to basically keep the focus on the producer level, at the farm level during harvesting. So this is the main focus uh, in the coming days uh, for the food security issues. So and the wheat and maize, you can see then in maize, uh, the main things comes from the storage and harvesting together. And then losses also wheat, it comes from the storage and harvesting. So there are the losses main contributions comes from the different um, storage, drying, threshing, transporting and harvesting. So this was the overall scenario for the cereals. So the main things we need to give focus on farm level, producer level is almost 10%, almost 10%. And then uh, the wholesaler, retailer, uh, processor level is almost like a 3%. So there are huge things we need to do at the producer level. Uh, I'm trying to, maybe too many of data make you distract in your attraction, but this is the common losses overall there. Uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, this is almost 30%, I told you, that is the huge loss comes from the uh, fruits and vegetables. In fruits and vegetables, it, uh, first the growers, they grow, then the middle agent, it comes to the channel, local accessible market, then it comes to the trader. They try to storage for the short time. Here is huge loss. Then comes to the wholesaler and the middle agent. Uh, why fruits and vegetables? In many developed countries I have seen, they have farmer's market. So farmers even can, after selling, sometimes they can bring it to the farmer's market, can sell. But if everybody is farmer, who will buy the fruits and vegetables? So there are some traders, they do that things. There are some commissioning agent, middle agent, they try to buy in a very low price. So uh, it's a wholesaler to middle agent, retailers and consumers, finally it comes. So there are, there are losses in every steps it comes. So there, we need a huge study here, what happens to each of the steps. So uh, not a detailed study was taken here, but a, a focused study was conducted. I just uh, bringing some of the things here. In production like a harvest, they were trimming, grading, and pre-cooling, and packing. So it's a common, common chain, common chain. So in fruits, I think many of you could see the jackfruits. Jackfruits is our national fruits. It's very big. I guess it is 40 kg, which one is the really biggest one. I, I, if I could find time, I would bring a big jackfruit picture to you. So this is a common, you can see each of the fruit is at least 10 kg, 10 to 15 kg. So a, a bunch of tree in a Myrmishing region is one of the best region for the jackfruits. It needs very high temperature and it does also needs a very uh, rainfall, extreme rainfall also. And uh, is very high nutritional values and not so costly compared to mango and some other crops. So the jackfruits, you can see that uh, how it goes. The jackfruits, they have a losses after the, the harvest because a huge amount, no facilities for keeping up the stuff. All times, if you visit, sometimes you can see besides the road, the huge tons of jackfruits. Just, just a pile up there, no, no uh, technical facilities. Uh, this is the jackfruits, the common, uh, the losses in the jackfruits, the loss in the jackfruits. This is the jackfruit farmers. These are the common the losses for the jackfruits. Mango, uh, we grow very tasty mango. Uh, because I have been in many places to test the mango, Malaysia, Indonesia, Latin America. Uh, in Japan, they produce mango. Uh, you will be very surprised. A mango is around um, $40. Sometimes it is $50, one mango. So it's very expensive over there, but we produce tons and million tons of the mango every year. And the northern part is very good for the mango. So the common mango transportation, you can see the huge amount of mango. The other day I went to see a market, I go saw the strawberry. So we are selling strawberry amount of kg. 
So you will be surprised in Japan that we sell, so we usually buy strawberry couple of like a, in one packet, maybe five to ten or four to five. But we are producing a lots of strawberry nowadays. But here is also lots of losses. Uh, the mango, uh, the mango is a common way to to bring from the farm to the traders, and the losses you can see due to the storage. The main thing here is the storage. Storage facilities are not good at all. They kept the mango in the uh, we call is arut in one place. All the mango in the same place, and then if one is rotten, then all the mango is getting like a spoil is here. This is a common scenario of the mango. You can see. Uh, another fruits we produce called pineapple. Uh, in the uh, close to the Maimishin region, there is a good place uh, called Tangail. They produce the maximum uh, pineapple there. Pineapple has also huge loss due to the storage and the transportation. The common practice to, to carry the pineapple to growers to the market. And from the market, there are some trucks. They bring these things, uh, consume buyers, traders, and local agent. Farmers usually bring in this way, and there are some commissioning agents who buy this stuff. So they have no facilities to keep the stuff for longer. When they bring, they need to sell it on that day. Because we, if they will take it back, where well, they will keep it there. So even uh, it, sometimes the production cost and selling cost are equal. They have no, no benefit. Even sometimes lose it also. Because the traders, there is a no com policy to get all these stuffs to get benefited. These are common losses in the pineapples. And the lychee it is another. We have also lots of losses here. Uh, this is the normal uh, production losses, common one. And the banana uh, is also a huge loss here. You can see that uh, using uh, the carbides, if you are very familiar, they are using some sort of chemical to, uh, to make it quick ripening. Because uh, there is a very window of transportation is one or two days. They have to take it and sell it. If it is a green, maybe nobody would buy. And if they would need to bring it in the market, if it will not ripen, uh, the wholesaler or retailer, they will not buy it. So what they do, sometimes they give you some sort of chemicals, and then this one overnight, it becomes yellow and ripen and they can sell it to the market. So this is really bad for the health. It's called carbide, one of the chemicals they use for ripening the mango. So economic loss of the fruits. Where's the loss? Around mango, we lost 27% of mango. Jackfruit, we lost 43%. It's a huge loss. Banana, 24%. Then lychee, 24%. Pineapple, 43% of loss. Papaya, 40% of loss. Orange. 23% of loss. So it's a huge loss uh, every year. In a million dollar, you can see the total loss in $119 million only for mango. There is a no storage facilities, nothing. And uh, total loss in million dollar based on retail price. Uh, this is the harvest price, and this one is a retail price. $167 million of loss for mango then jackfruit loss, banana, lychee, pineapple. So these all losses happens only for the technical facilities or post-harvest losses. So yeah, the amount of the losses. Uh, I did a carp to make it visually mango. Banana is the most one which has the things, mango loss and then jackfruit, banana, major fruits. It's the one was the actual loss and harvest and retail loss. In vegetables, I told that last year we huge amount of potatoes. So farmers, uh, potatoes needs like a chilling or cold storage, go to the market. But usually, uh, you see this the last year's pictures when the farmers had lots of potatoes they couldn't sell. They left the potatoes on the road, and then uh, there was a no policy for the government to have the potatoes uh, in somewhere in the chilling facilities or cold storage. Because this potato is very expensive uh, in other seasons. But at the time of the growing, you can see the, how the loss occurs. So they're bringing the million tons of the potato. This is the farmers. They have the common things, the loss. The tomato, uh, you can see the losses here. 
huge losses just left over the drains and other things because of the storage facilities and good tra transportation facilities. The main thing, uh, the harvesting time is not also optimum. You can see they are bringing the tomato a lot together, how the loss occurs in a storage. No storage, no chilling temperature, nothing just left over the potato, uh, tomatoes this way. So this is the common uh, losses uh, during for tomatoes. So vegetable sorting, when they have a vegetable, usually the village women, they usually sort out the vegetables. And then uh, vegetable lost, you see this is uh, uh, pumpkins and uh, how huge pumpkins, even in the field. We grow lots of things, but the thing is the, the post-harvest losses. It comes all the way to the channel, or all the comes things in the road or others, and then come to the retailer. So this is the one of the channel to see the vegetable losses. So vegetable losses, I tried to find the tomato, 32% tomato loss. Cauliflower, 34% loss. Brinjal, uh, okra, is a 29% okra. Then cucumbers, 27%. So it's a huge loss. So only total loss in US million dollars, $7.6 million based harvest. Uh, retail, $9.88 million of losses. So these are the common practice for the uh, vegetable losses. Uh, per credit of increase, when it's like a mango, banana, all together, is average increase. You can see the person, the community price, how much we are losing of our, uh, from the post-harvest loss. If we could keep up it, what could be the maximum average increase from the fruits and vegetables? Uh, this is the, the summary. Uh, major vegetables and uh, production in metric ton, million US dollar, what's the loss comes from the vegetables of, and based on harvest and retail price. So it's, it's really a huge amount of loss coming from the vegetables as well. Uh, I would like to conclude. Mm, so this is, you can see at a glance, at 2005, the per percent of the loss, 12.96%. It was the BBS data. The, the data which I showed you, this was 2010's data, the recent National Food Security Program's data. So we couldn't increase much last six years. Still the losses are the same. So pulses, vegetables and potatoes, fruits, the same. Uh, these are the chain common losses, uh, estimated total losses, almond around 9.16% borrow, rice 10% aush, so in each of the states, so how we are getting the losses, the processor wholesale and the retail level. So this is the post-harvest losses. This is for the fruits and vegetables, around 30% loss. The farm level, middle and traders, wholesale and retailer level, what amount of the losses are coming from the fruits and vegetables. So what could be the recommendations? Uh, a call. Uh, there are lots of things that are coming up, but just I try to make it a very simple way uh, called system approach. So Professor Casey told us when I was here. So harvest, he had lots of opportunity to use. Like uh, I was talking with Professor Leitian that maybe the NASA could give us some sort of images that could give, give the idea what is the optimum time to harvest. So that our extension department could work out what are the optimum time and timing and timeliness of operation. Uh, threshing and drying, there is also loss, consumers, storage, and packaging. So need the knowledge and technologies, especially for harvest to storage. We need knowledge. For knowledge, you need to have the extensions and others. Farmers need to uh, train and also need the technology. And then storage to processing packaging needs the technology. Storage to consumers, when it comes, needs to have a good distribution channels and also come to the retailer. So threshing, drying, and storage needs also knowledge and technology. So uh, the th traditional drum threshers, or power, thre power threshers are not so many, few. So even farmers cannot own the power threshers. It needs to be shared. So that's why it has also the loss comes from uh, these steps. Whatever the things we need, we need the innovations, of course, the based on the country for packaging and processing of the foods and the vegetables. So to need the need assessment for reducing the post-harvest loss. So an integrated study and research is needed. 
as well as extension outreach is needed because farmers need to train up uh, to understand. And then we need to build up the facilities. Facilities for storage, facilities for transportation. These are the two things. Uh, at, the, at the farm level, at, the, at which stage we need to find out what are the main things we need to identify uh, the losses and then reduce the losses. I think I have all the way, uh, most of the references I took from uh, two uh, study and uh, the data from Bangladesh Rice Research Institute and BBS Bureau of Statistics. Uh, thank you very much. I think I'm almost done. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to give uh, some idea about what are the losses occurring over there in the US ADM project. And uh, three of my graduate students, they helped me to produce to collect the data within short time. I would like to, and some of the image I collected from Bangladesh. So I had a plan to do that, but I couldn't find time because I had another works. So I would like to do a, a GIS buffer analysis to show from the distribution point, from the farm level to the uh, consumer level, what the distance, how the loss occurs based on the distance. So we can do some sort of distance analysis because the, when the things grows on the field, when it comes to the uh, traders, what the distance it co crosses. So according to the based on distance, we can find out the cost estimate and the losses. So uh, there are many exciting things I learned while I was doing, because as Professor Khalid already told, my basic field is precision ag. I was thinking maybe there are lots of scopes to use the precision ag that farmers should need to know that this is the site specific things we need to do at the time of harvesting. Uh, during the pre-harvest time, I didn't take only the post-harvest things. There are the lots of things we can do to reduce the loss. And then you have seen that almost 12% is losses coming from rice and 30% coming from fruits and vegetables and the amount. And I believe that uh, ADM and the PHL they can contribute a lot. And there are the huge scopes uh, to Bangladesh uh, to minimize the loss and help in the food security programs. Uh, I think I have done almost. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask me. I can uh, try to explain from my experiences when I was working in Bangladesh and all the way. Yeah, sure. It seems like those in common here talk about the cereals, the vegetables, and the fruits. Yes. It, it seems like in all three cases, the farmers are just growing whatever they want to grow because they can grow it well and they just pick up a pretty good quantity. How much does a farmer actually know about where his product is going to get marketed, how it's going to get used? How well, how well does he know that before he grows a big quantity? He doesn't know anything. He just grow and wait for who will buy. That's the common scenario over there. I think that's the common scenario with every yes. post harvest loss situation I've seen. I can give you an explanation. In Japan, in 2011, we had a big uh, earthquake. After the earthquake and tsunami, there was a, uh, cases of like radioactive issues. And, um, the farmers, uh, they had a lot of spinach, and they have a lot of um, rice and other things. And uh, three, three prefectures were suffered very much. And the local community and others, the consumers, didn't find the confidence to buy. What would happen? Because they had a policy. Japan agriculture had a policy. The government buy gave them the money and destroyed all the spinaches over the field. They had the policy, they know where they will go. But in Bangladesh, the farmers do not know anything where they will sell their product. Who will buy their You have seen the potatoes. After the production, he doesn't know where he will sell it. Who will buy it? Yeah, Professor. Uh, I'm sorry to be somewhat contrary uh, to your presentation. I greatly appreciate all the facts you provide and, and staggered by the loss that you showed up in fruits and vegetables. But from a policy point of view, if you have 13 or 14% loss in some regions 
and 6% loss in Kumila. Yes. Doesn't it suggest that narrowing the gap between those areas and Kumila would be the first priority? Because you could get 6% gain while using the current technology. And what you are saying says that this is due to the education level of Kumila. Uh, Two things comes. This is a field study, what I never, uh, concluded here. So in the field study, the technical efficiency is also there. Technical efficiency comes from the education. Uh, I am also, my father also came from Kumilla, and I have the opportunity to visit there. So the threshing loss and others, they use shared machinery much more compared to other regions. Because in Kumilla and that region, uh, many of the people are rich persons. They are moving to the Middle East and they can buy machines compared to other places. So most of the cases they have the machines and others, they can reduce. Uh, this is one of the reason um, I believe that uh, from the other sides. Uh, if you, my wife, she comes from the northern part. When I visit the northern part, then I feel that they're still very much behind from, the, from that central Kumilla or that areas because of education level, technical efficiency, and also a buying capacity and hiring capacity of the machines. I don't want to set up a disagreement. So my question is, what is the role of extension services? There is an extension service from the job board. You are not knowing anything. Extension services that, um, we have extension services definitely, but in, including the post-harvest loss, there is not much of concrete policy in extension activities. This is the common scenario in the post-harvest losses. If you see in many places in Bangladesh, we have a DAE, Department of Agricultural Extension. They are working on uh, seed distribution, fertilizer distribution. They are working on field level, uh, but mostly in pre-harvesting -pre level mostly pre-harvesting level, from sowing to before the harvest. These are the extension workers, most of the cases working. So Department of Agriculture Extension, they have the policy, but not for the post-harvest cases, a lot of things are not common. So they have a field supervisor, block supervisor, in every, every places. Field supervisor and block supervisor, they are looking only the pre-harvest level. Dr. Ahmed, you know, like uh, our ABA Institute is initiating some something in that sort, of, like in the Coursera course, like post harvest loss prevention mm -hmm. one on one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we hope to, uh, we have an ambitious plan, we hope to complete about eight modules, you know, what is post harvest loss and all the interventions, how to do that, you know, not, not in too depth of technical, but just for something like in, in, for extension. For educating people about that, not farmers, but maybe maybe everyone that are, that are involved in all this different value chain. And uh, you know, we more people we talk to, everybody is very excited. And I think initially the course will be produced in English and it'll be immediately translated into Chinese, Portuguese, and a normal language. Okay? And then you know, we are talking to uh, a group in India. And they will take our materials and convert into uh, Hindi and other Indian languages. So you think uh, that would be of any value from Bangladesh if we provide that to Mayman Singh and, and through you or someone, would they be able to convert that into Bengali? Of course it would be value. Uh, there is the, we have a few things that call processing, agricultural processing. But that do not focus more details and post-harvest level in each. So what we need, we need to like uh, make our graduate much more concerned. Even before I produce, uh, presenting this one, I didn't know in details because I too admire that my field is a precision ag. When I start to work on trying to find out, then I was so surprised about the loss. Though I have ag engineers, I do lots of drying, threshings. We studied lots of drying principles, very difficult equations and other things, but farmers are still using the sun drying. No tunnel dryer, no batch dryers, but we did lots of batch dryer modelings and other things, but how much it works. So uh, I think uh, it would be good if it is a country-wise. If we, we taught many times the mechanical dryers to our students, even I also learned 
But if the mechanical dryers doesn't exist there, then it is tough. So we need some uh, location based, including that. If we can add that module, like from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, so if we can add those things in that module, including the advanced one, that would really, really appreciable and good.